Hello, today I'm making a custom-made dog collar. It will have a floral tool design on it. Somewhat simple, but it will look pretty good for this dog collar. And this is what you would call a tap-off. It is a pattern that's cut into the leather, and it is, uh, um, it's got some age to it, and it's a, kind of firm. Um, and I'll be uh, tapping that over onto this uh, strip of leather right here that I've got prepared. This is damp. Uh, I wet it and then I let a uh, lot of the moisture come out of it, but it's still damp and it's just perfect for cutting in the, the design that I want. I'm going to leave a little space here for my name stamp or maker stamp at the end here and set that right on top there and then take this hammer and tap this like this and that will leave the impression that I want to cut on the leather. And that's a big time saver. So see I've tapped that on there like I want it. And then now I ran out of uh, uh, pattern there so I'll move it back and set that right there and I'm gonna tap it right here on this back portion toward the buckle end. And that's good enough. I can come in there with my swivel knife and cut that design in there. Now that I have my design tapped in here, I can come back with my swivel tool or swivel knife and cut the design in. Just follow the, the tapped in line there. It's a big time saver to use a tap off like that. And your pattern is cons pretty consistent that way. If it's a pattern that you use a lot of or whatever. If you're doing one-of-a-kind patterns, uh, a paper tracing is okay. And then just trace it onto the leather. Now I'll let this dry out a little bit. Um, it's, it's too damp to do the uh, background work, the beveling and the background work. It's uh, it needs to dry out a little before I continue tooling. Um, I've got a hair dryer I use to kind of speed up the process, or I've got a fan over there. I can set it in front of the fan and keep an eye on it. And uh, in just a few minutes, it'll be just right to do the beveling and background work. Okay, I'd like to go over the tools I'll be using to do the uh, background and the uh, beveling. Well, actually, I'll start with the bevelers. The medium-sized beveler that I use is a uh, Craft Tool B803, and the smaller one is the B802 made by Craft Tool. These are fairly new tools that have been made in the last few years, and I hand-picked these out. I like the crosshatch on these two tools right here for doing my beveling. And um, the uh, background tool is a Craft Tool 888. And that's what I do the, the, the background work with real light around the outside of my stems and flowers here and in between here. That's what I do the background work with. And I'll be using a uh, pear-shaped bruiser and this is an older uh, craft tool, and the number on it is a P221. So with 
these four tools right here and of course the uh, the swivel knife that I use this is the Barry King and it has the quarter inch hollow ground blade that that blade is super easy to uh, sharpen and uh, it, it stays sharp um, for quite a while actually and um, all I have to do is strap it or strop it is a term used uh, to uh, smooth uh, smooth the cutting edge up. So what I do first is I start off by using the uh, medium sized bevel or the 802 and on the tighter turns I use the, the, the 802 and then on the straighter longer stems I use the 803 B803. So I'll bevel around everything at this time, and I use a Maul Master too. This is a uh, 22 ounce uh, round Maul, and uh, that's what I um, prefer to use. Now the leather is somewhat drier than it was when I actually cut the design in. Now it's dried out, um, but it's still slightly damp, so it will take the impression. If this is tooled while it's too wet, if I do the background work, as it really dries, the design or the impression will pull out and you'll it'll look washed out. So you have to kind of learn when it's time to do certain steps. As you can see, I'm using, uh, well, just real light taps. Okay, here's a look at what I've got so far. I beveled around everything. Then I came in and I used a, uh, another craft tool I've to brought out of the drawer there. Um, it's a 709 Sunburst. Actually, I kind of uh, uh, veined the uh, stems just lightly, not very heavy, but just lightly. And here's a tool that I handmade myself on a belt sander to uh, kind of set around the center of that flower right there. I put a cross hatch on there with my swivel knife and then used this tool to kind of give that a, a neat effect. That's a tool I made. And then the sunburst right there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, bevel around, not bevel around, but uh, do my background work in any space like that, and then around, lightly around the edge to kind of uh, give that a, uh, a unique effect. But I'm almost done here, so um, I'll do my background work, and then um, that'll be all with the tooling. I'm using the fatter edge of this tool and following around my flower and my stems. And I've got a, a, I'm lifting that up a little bit so it'll be beveled out. And this is with my 888 um, background tool. I'm just using light packs. I don't want that to be really, uh, real deep, distinct mashed in. I just want it to be nice and smooth. And like uh, I would 
do with my beveling. I, I'd rather uh, do some little light taps like that and then move my tool. And if I need to come back, I can just kind of keep blending the design. Now here in the center right here, you can turn this tool any way you want to get up in the corner. and It's got a pointed edge on it, and that helps to get up in there and kind of clean that up. Clean it out.